Hello everyone, I'm Brian. Today I'm reacting to An Intimate Encounter with Your Ego, Ahankara in Advaita Vedanta. So, this is an older video of Swami Taratmananda. I'm kind of run through most of his, some of his videos. A lot of his other ones are very, very long. Like, they're broken down into little pieces, but they are very long, and I think this is something that individual people should do on their own time. So I had to go back to his older ones, the ones I haven't reacted to. And this seems interesting. I don't know how I missed this one. But an intimate encounter with your ego, Ahankara, in Advaita Vedanta. So, anyways, let's go ahead and get started. I'd like to introduce you to a character who is very strange but surprisingly familiar. A character that happens to be your own ego. Not ego in the sense of pride or arrogance, but in a more <coughs> fundamental sense. Actually, that's pretty true though, pride and arrogance, because again, in terms of Advaita, at least as far as I understand, in terms of Advaita Vedanta, ego is the false you, the you that wants to be alive, that wants to be, I am the real deal, which is prideful and arrogance. <laughs> but funny enough, it, in, in I guess in a lot of terms, ego is pride and arrogance, and in terms of Advaita Vedanta, in a lot of sense, it is pride and arrogance too, <laughs> because while it's a, it's a false I that wants to be the big guy that wants to fool you to say to pretend to thinking it's the real I very prideful of itself and very arrogant to think that way <laughs> as your inborn sense of individuality the word ego as you know is actually the Latin pronoun I and here it means your inner I your feeling of I-ness Ego is a thought that represents you. It's the I thought in your mind. The simplest way to identify it is to notice what happens when your ego is not present. Think about a time when you were enjoying your favorite kind of music and you found yourself getting lost in an enchanting tune, becoming deeply absorbed in its delightful melodies. While you were lost in that sublime experience, could you still hear the music? Yes, of course, because you were still there. So then, who is it that got lost in the music? It was your ego that got lost. Your ego temporarily disappeared while you were absorbed in that powerful experience. And in the absence of your ego, you felt different. You weren't aware of your physical body. You didn't feel your usual sense of being an individual person with a name, a birthday, and a lifelong history. <coughs> your sense of personal identity had vanished for the time being. Would this be considered like a temporary, a temporary, temporarily, in, a temporal, temporal, no, temporary, temporary enlightenment? Good Lord. <laughs> temporary enlightenment? Then, when that state of blissful absorption faded away, your ego returned to its usual dwelling place in your mind, and you felt your personal identity return. So, ego is your sense of individuality, your feeling of being an individual person. To make all this more clear, let's hear from your ego itself, from its place of residence inside the vast expanse of your mind. A 
allow me to introduce myself. I am your eagle. <laughs> I am the voice in your mind that says I. In Sanskrit, I am called Ahankara, which literally means I maker. So technically speaking, I am the particular activity in your mind that's responsible for your feeling of I-ness, your feeling of individuality. Mental activities like me don't have physical form, shape, or color, so this image of me here is merely a product of Swami Tadatmananda's <laughs> overactive imagination. I'm stuck here inside your mind, which is like an enormous chamber. Lining its walls are all the compartments where your memories are stored. Everything you experience takes place in this vast space. Whatever you see, hear, smell, taste, or touch emerges in here as mental events called perceptions. For example, when you see something, your eyeballs capture the object's appearance, and then neurons in your brain produce images. Images that appear here, inside your mind, for you to experience. In the same way, any kind of noise your ears happen to pick up causes various sound perceptions to emerge here, inside your mind. Everything you perceive with your five senses emerges in your mind in the form of mental events. And as each mental event emerges, it's immediately experienced by you. You are aware or conscious of what's happening in every corner of your mind, in every nook and cranny, so to speak, because your mind is permeated by awareness. Your mind is completely filled with conscious awareness like a room that's completely filled with light shining from a bright lamp. In ancient India, the rishis, or sages, discovered that the consciousness shining in your mind is your true self, your essential nature, the inner divinity. They said, consciousness is the unchanging light of awareness by which you know or experience all the changing activities in your mind. And just like the sun is utterly unaffected by all it shines upon, in the same way, consciousness is utterly unaffected by whatever it illumines the rishis boldly concluded, because unchanging consciousness is your essential nature, you are utterly unaffected by everything that happens in your mind. This is one of the most powerful and consequential teachings of the ancient sages. We'll return to this important point later. Right now, let's hear more from your ego. Now, you might ask, what is my role in this complicated process of sense perception? How am I, your ego, involved when you see, hear, smell, taste, or touch something? Well, when you see a flower, you have the experience, I see the flower. In the sentence, there's an object, flower, and a subject, I. These correspond to two different mental events here in your mind. One is the flower thought, and the other is the subject, the I thought. That I is me, your ego. Whenever you perceive something, I am present in that experience as your sense of individuality. 
When the doorbell rings, you have the experience, I, an individual person, hear the doorbell. When you smell freshly baked bread, you have the experience, I, an individual person, smell the bread. In each case, I am present along with the objects you perceive. So, your experience of an object has two parts. One consists of all the sensations produced by the object, and the other part is me, your ego, your feeling of being an individual person. Next, you might ask, is it possible to perceive something in my absence? Can you see a flower without me, your ego, being present in your mind? The answer is yes, but only under certain conditions. Suppose you were to become entranced by the exquisite beauty of this flower, and you fell into a state of absorption, like when you get deeply absorbed in your favorite music. Then you wouldn't have the experience, I, an individual person, see the flower. You would only experience flower. Whenever you get absorbed like that, I, your ego, temporarily fade away. I do that from time to time. After all, I'm only a mental event, and all mental events come and go. Hmm. I'm trying to think, like, how uh, is that an example? <coughs> Excuse me. Um, because, like, I get the music, you kind of just experience it. But then I guess daydreaming is can be potentially like that. I guess that could be a, a very close um so I don't know if I've ever been absorbed in the flower or just an object in general, but I remember I do know that sometimes you're just staring off in a distance, like with a blank expression in your face because you're just in a sense daydreaming. I don't know if I've ever looked at an object and just kind of got lost in the object itself. More likely I have looked at an object and all of a sudden started daydreaming. <clears throat> hmm. I'm trying to think throughout all of my life, have <laughs> ever have have imagined an object that got lost in its beauty or whatever it may be I got lost in. <clears throat> I don't think I have. But I know I have daydreamed about things, so I'm wonder if those things are very similar. You, on the other hand, are completely unlike all these transient mental events. You don't come and go. You constantly illumine whatever is happening in this vast mind of yours, even when you are deeply absorbed or sleeping soundly. You know when I am present here as your sense or feeling of individuality. And when you get absorbed, you know when I fade away. You're aware of my presence and absence. You're aware of what's happening inside here right now while you're awake. And tonight, when you're asleep, you'll be aware of the absence of any activity inside here. Consciousness never sleeps. Your mind does. So far, we've only discussed sense perception, when things you see, hear, smell, taste, and touch emerge as mental events in your mind. But in addition to these perceptions, you also experience other kinds of mental events, like cognitions and emotions. Those mental events are not produced by your five senses. 
They're produced by your mind itself. Let's consider your cognitions first. Some cognitions are abstract and conceptual, like when you ponder the meaning of life. But others are detailed and practical, like when you make a list of items to purchase at the market. While those cognitions are coming and going in your mind, your ego is also present. While you ponder the meaning of life, or while you're making up a shopping list, you still feel like an individual person. You feel the sense of I-ness because of the presence of your ego. Now, what about your emotions? Emotions emerge in your mind just like cognitions and perceptions. As soon as they emerge, you become aware of them. And while various emotions come and go in your mind, your ego is constantly present along with them. When you say, I am happy or I am sad, the I you're referring to is actually your ego, your I thought, which is present as your sense of being an individual person who feels happy or sad. I just thought of this. Could it be possible <clears throat> that your 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 true self is talking about your ego? You're referring to your ego as I. <clears throat> or yeah, I think so. Or <clears throat> I'm trying to think. I feel lonely, as in your, your true self is saying, I am lonely because uh, the body that you're in is lonely. I know this is making things a little bit more complicated. Let me pause the video real Let me pause the recording real quick. Let me think about this. Okay, so I did think about it a little bit. It, I see how my the way I thought about it can work. But it requires the understanding of when you say I, you mean your true self. And then when you refer to this body with the same I, that you are merely making a, uh, how to say, to make it easier to understand. <clears throat> so I am, let's say, I am sad. I understand that I, my true self, is not sad but referring to I as the body as well is sad but <laughs> I mean at that point it's just you're just referring to your body or to the mind at that point and and the, the sheer fact that you just have to understand that you understand that your true self the real I is not affected by it so maybe that's just a little bit over complicating things perhaps I was thinking that but like I said I, I, I can see how it could be understood this way because I was just thinking of an example as an imagine if you have in order for you to navigate through life you have to get into an exosuit and your body your true body is inside a false body and you're operating it and then and essentially your life locked in that suit there's no way to get out of it you know because you're essentially you have to be in it to survive per se just a per, just example follow the example to a certain point, you'll start referring to the exosuit as I. <clears throat> this is me. And this is kind of like the same thought about this, where the ego, um, how do I say, that uh, you start thinking that the exosuit is your real body. And real in reality, it's not. But it is in terms of, I'm just complicating this, but in terms of uh, making simple, you know, discussion, simple talk, it makes sense to say just I, I'm feeling sad or whatever, you know. Because you don't want to say, my ego is feeling sad. <laughs> my true self is not. <laughs> it's like, wait, so are you sad or are you not? Like, my ego is, but I am not. What? Uh, so I guess it's just the simplification of things in terms of normative talking, if that makes any sense. Essentially, just talking to normal people, you would say, I'm sad, obviously.
Um, if you are, and you wouldn't say, oh, my body is sad today. <laughs> you know, what do you mean your body's sad? <laughs> the ancient rishis made the remarkable discovery that you, in your essential nature, don't really become happy or sad. <laughs> Oops. You are the awareness or consciousness that illumines everything in your mind, including your emotions of happiness and sadness. As we discussed before, just like the sun is unaffected by all it illumines, in the same way, the consciousness illumining the activities in your mind remains unaffected by all those activities, including your emotions. But then, if you are truly unaffected by sadness, then why do you feel so sad sometimes? The problem is one of confusion. When you say, I feel sad, the I you refer to is your ego, your I thought, not consciousness. You wrongly identify the I thought in your mind as being who you really are, the unchanging light of awareness that illumines the changing activities of your mind. The truth is, sadness belongs to your mind and the ego that dwells there. Sadness doesn't belong to you, the conscious being. When you thoroughly understand this fact, you'll be able to experience sadness without feeling so sad, without wanting the sadness to go away. Really speaking, sadness is not your enemy. When you watch a sad movie, you might leave the theater with tears streaming down your cheeks and say, that's the best movie I've seen in years. So, sadness is not the problem. The problem is concluding that sadness in your mind truly affects you, the changeless awareness that knows the presence of sadness. And just like sadness is not your enemy, your ego too is not your enemy. Many people wrongly believe that to become enlightened mm. or to gain liberation, the ego must be destroyed. But your ego is just a transient mental event, like your perceptions and cognitions and emotions. And none of these mental events can truly affect you, the unchanging consciousness that illumines them. Not only that, your ego has a crucial function in coordinating all your thoughts and behavior. In the absence of your ego, like when you're deeply absorbed in music, you really can't do anything at all. You can only passively enjoy the state of absorption. You need your ego to engage in worldly activities. It's a natural and vital part of your human nature. And in the final analysis, your ego is not to blame for your suffering. You suffer due to confusion, due to ignorance, due to the failure to recognize your own true nature as unchanging consciousness, unborn, eternal, vast, full, and complete. With the help of the powerful insights and teachings of the Rishis, you can remove that ignorance and enjoy complete freedom from suffering, even in the presence of sadness. Hmm. I don't know. That's... Uh... Well, I mean, maybe that's the reason why I probably, the reason why I say I don't know is because I am not enlightened. So, because it's, it's really weird 
to say that you know your true self will be unaffected by all of this, right? All, all the everything essentially. But then, yet your body and your ego still feels the emotions, the sadness, the happiness, and all of these things. <coughs> so, I mean, how is that? I don't know. How is that possible to not be affected by it, but at the same time be affected by it? I mean, again, Swami, uh, Swami Vivekananda still cried, was a very still emotional person, even he is considered to be enlightened. So he still felt all this, even though he was enlightened. But, I mean, uh, like I was saying, like, you still felt it. I'm trying to logically think about this thing. I'm, I'm trying to think about it really kind of like how to make sense of this. It's like you don't feel it, but you do feel it. Or you're unaffected by it, but you're affected by it. So you're not affected by it because your true self is unaffected by the world, the illusion. But yet the body is affected by it. So to me, it's kind of like... Uh, not me not saying much or meaning anything to a large degree <laughs> because then uh, uh, this is something i want to do as a members only thing <laughs> uh, this this a little bit of a deeper think into it but anyways i guess i'll leave it at that i won't i won't go too deep into it but how is it that you're unaffected by it but you're affected by it and i i understand the idea behind it but I guess grasping the full concept of it is very foreign to me, and there is a and there's an idea for me to say it's pointless. I won't go any deeper than that. I will leave that hanging right there. Uh, something I do want to discuss in my members only channel, which I do I am starting it up, but I do have one video on there, which is my 23andMe. The video kind of sucks, but I do read at least I read everything out. So <laughs> uh, I need to find out how to record video. Uh, YouTube videos or websites better on OBS. Um, anyways, uh, and to go a deeper, a deeper understanding, a deeper delve into these ideas, because uh, uh, in the regular channel I want to say a little bit. I don't want to speak too much. I know a lot of people complain about me speaking too much, but again, it's a React channel. You you have to understand that if you want to watch the, if please if you haven't watched the original video, go watch it in the original channel. Don't watch it on my channel, <laughs> and understand that you are watching a React channel, so you have to, in some degree, accept that it's a React channel and people are going to react a little bit differently. And I get it, I mean, do do voice your opinions, absolutely, because sometimes, like I said, I, I did talk a lot, mind your video's over with, so I'm going to talk a lot now, this is my, this is my free time to talk, <laughs> but um, I did talk a lot in the videos, so I did want to kind of narrow it down, because I want to really focus a little bit in the video and speak a little more directly about the subject matters in the video, and the members only one is going to be delving a little bit deeper in very particular subjects, and I hope that I have a, at least a one video every month, and then perhaps another video responding to comments, or maybe getting a little bit deeper depending on the comments on those videos. So it's my reaction to an intimate encounter with your ego, Ankara and Aveta Vedante. If you like my content, please consider subscribing, thumbs up, the sound down below. Thanks for watching. I will see you in the next vid.